Hey YouTube, I'm Ross Stewart with Stewart Media Digital and today I'm talking about concert videography. Now concert videography or photography, neither of those are my specialty, but I do have some experience and I just recently shot a concert. So I just wanna go over the gear I used, the shots I got, some things that I learned and some things I wish I did differently just to give you guys a rundown. So if you're interested in shooting video of concerts, uh, you'll have some idea of where to start. So first let's talk about the gear I used and what shots I got using that gear. So first up, I used a Sony a7S III, uh, which is actually the camera I'm shooting this video with now as my master shot. And on that camera, I used my 16 to 35 millimeter lens to get a nice wide angle. Now, as you see here, I have the crowd, the entire stage, the lights. Uh, this camera was also my camera for my main audio feed. I used an XLR cable like this one to capture audio directly from the soundboard. Now, which specifically, uh, which XLR cable you'll need will depend on the camera you use. Uh, this is XLR to XLR, which is great for a lot of cinema cameras that have XLR to XLR. Uh, my Sony a7S III takes S, uh, XLR to quarter inch, uh, so just know which cable you'll need. Next up for my tighter shot of just the stage and the heads of the people in front of me, um, I used another Sony mirrorless camera. Uh, I would have used another a7S III if I had a bunch of them, uh, but I also do photography. Uh, but thankfully, at least if you're in the Sony system, um, you can use their mirrorless cameras for some awesome 4K video as well. So this is the a7R III, uh, and I used this with my 70 to 200 to capture, a, to capture the entire stage. Now with this camera, I also used a nice little, you can see I still have the dead cat on here. Uh, this is just a Rode video mic um, that I used for backup audio. Now, I actually ended up using a, a blend of the two audios, and I'll get to that in the things I learned part at the end. Uh, but just know, especially with audio, redundancy is super important. Redundancy all the way, but especially with audio, if you get bad audio, that can ruin an entire project. So redundancy, redundancy, especially with audio. Next up, my third camera, I used a my Sony a7 III, also shoots great 4K video. Uh, I used this as my close-up camera. I moved around uh, in the front, having to squeeze by people. Thankfully, if you've got a camera and you look official, people will oftentimes make room for you to get from place to place. But still, when you're holding equipment, it can be a little frustrating trying to squeeze past the front row of people who are just rocking out, having a good time. Uh, but of course, that'll depend on the concert you go to specifically. There's definitely some fanboys and fangirls who will not budge an inch if they're pressed up against the front of the stage. Uh, so you may end up having to get creative. But overall, I'm really happy with the shots I got on here. Uh, I'm using my a 50 millimeter 1.2 to shoot this video. Uh, that is the lens I used uh, to get these close-ups. I wanted that really shallow depth of field from a 1.2. Uh, something like this uh, 85 1.8 or just really any fast aperture medium range uh, lens could work uh, if this is the look that you are going for. Now a side note on this, I did use my, my gimbal to get some stable shots uh, with this camera and I ended up not really using it. Something I learned using this is if you try to tilt all the way up, uh, if you're right under somebody, the motors really just don't keep up. So I ended up going mostly handheld. So something I learned definitely uh, don't bother using a gimbal, just go handheld. And honestly, that little bit of shake adds to the experience of feeling like you're at a concert. 
Now this is obviously to taste. Some people might want it to be super smooth, super steady, uh, but I, in my opinion, having that handshake uh, really makes it look like you're part of the crowd. And uh, this one, I didn't really capture any audio. Um, I cut a lot, so there was really no audio to use, but make sure that you do capture usable scratch audio just for syncing audio or for syncing your clips later using those audio peaks. Uh, I had, because I was so close up with this camera, I had the audio gain turned all the way down to the lowest setting. And my final camera that I used is a GoPro Hero Black 10. Now really any GoPro will work uh, just fine. I used it with this clamp to clamp it to a side railing and get an ultra wide just to cut to. Now the GoPro footage doesn't mix that well straight out of camera with my other footage. So you do have to do some tweaking or just be okay with it looking a little bit different. Uh, but my three Sony mirrorless cameras, I did shoot them all in S-Log3 and color graded them the same way. So they blended really nicely together. The GoPro took a little bit more tweaking and still is far from perfect. Uh, it does do a really good job of with its auto gain in, for audio. I didn't have a ton of trouble syncing the audio from the GoPro. Now, when it comes to syncing all of these cameras, there are a couple ways to do it depending on your gear. Some gear allows you to uh, set a time code and sync all the time codes, and that's probably the easiest way. But a lot of gear, especially if you're mixing and matching types of cameras, uh, that is not always going to work. I used a software called Plural Eyes, uh, spelled with eyes like eyes, and uh, it worked really well. I did have to line up a couple clips uh, by hand, but the built-in audio sync in Premiere just wasn't enough to sync the dozens and dozens of clips I had. So something like Pluralize can be really useful, but it is $300 US, so it can be a little bit expensive if you're just starting out but it is definitely worth it. Now, just a couple of bonus tips. Something I learned shooting a concert at, a, at this smaller venue is that the soundboard, what I was counting on being my main audio, because that's what I've done before in the past, uh, it was mostly pushing drums and uh, vocals, so it wasn't really capturing as much of the guitars. So that was a little bit of a problem. Uh, the reason for that is because the amps are turned on and they create enough of their own volume, so they don't need to be amplified through the house speakers quite as much at smaller venues. I ended up blending what I thought would be my main audio uh, with my backup audio and it ended up sounding pretty nice. Another important thing to do for the sake of matching colors, uh, if you think about a concert, there's all sorts of crazy colorful lights going on all the time, there's some really bright highlights and some really dark shadows. So shooting in the flattest profile you can on Sony, it's picture profile eight, which is S-Log3, gives you a lot of wiggle room in terms of matching all the colors nicely and uh, color grading it to look how you want. Now again, if you're using other cameras like GoPros, uh, that, that you do have to, trying to match it with them can be a little tricky. Another thing is, I wish I had a couple more GoPros for this. I brought it just because I had it. I didn't really think I would use it, uh, but I ended up really liking the shot, and I wish that I had at least two and possibly a third to get some more funky uh, close-up angles, a camera I can just clamp to something and leave it there throughout the concert. Definitely, when I shoot more concerts, I will have more GoPros. Uh, I thought that they were really fun shots. And finally, I have individual reviews for most of the gear that I talked about in this video. So if you're interested in uh, learning more about any of the gear itself, uh, feel free to check out those videos on my channel. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.